Hello, welcome back for another video on probability and calculus together. In this video, we look at a real life example of an exponential density function. Remember the exponential density function is a function that is zero for all negative values of x, and then it becomes non-zero for all positive values of x, including um, uh, x equals zero, and it becomes an exponentially decaying function. In a previous video, we calculated the mean of the exponential density function, and we found out that the mean was the reciprocal of k. So in most of these problems, we'll have the ability to be able to know what the mean is, and by knowing the mean, then we can exactly know the function because these guys are reciprocals of each other. The only thing you need is k, and now we know that k is the reciprocal of the mean. So you give me an exponential density function, you give me the mean, I know everything I need to build the function because now I can replace the k in the formula with 1 over the mean. So the formula is now going to be 1 over the mean e to the negative x over the mean for all x's that are positive. All right. All right. So we're on to example uh, 6, it's called, real life problem. We're talking about waiting in line at a bank and there's an exponential density function that models this and the the average waiting time the mean is eight minutes and we'll answer three questions about this situation but what we need before we do anything is to get the function in hand according to what's above then we should be able to say since the mean is eight we know the function replace the mu's in that formula with one over uh, with, with with eight so it'll be one over eight e to the negative x over eight so long as x is greater than or equal to zero and zero so long as x is less than zero all right first question letter a what's the probability that a customer is served in the first three minutes this measures the the waiting time until a customer is served okay and so if the customer is going to be served in the first three minutes, as a technicality, it's from minus infinity up to three. But that really means zero to three because the function's dead for all those negative x values. The function is zero there. So yeah, the waiting time being three minutes, probability, that means zero to three integral. I don't know why I pulled the one over eight out. You know, it cancels, right? You have this multiplier on x in the integration of that you have to multiply by the reciprocal so we have to multiply by a negative eight and that cancels with the one eighth okay so we'll just have negative um e to the negative x over eight i guess we could i just leave it we could write it as um negative one over e to the x over eight but i would leave it like that so we put a three in we put a zero in now be careful, uh, when you put the zero in, it's minus a negative, and e to the zero is going to be one. Okay, and so the answer to this question is one minus one over e to the three eighths. Okay, but just to get a feel for what this means, you know, what's the chance, what's the likelihood, what's the probability, it's best for us to get it as a percentage. This is the value, this is the answer to the question for a calculus class, but for a probability question, we want a number. We got to go to a computer. What percentage? What likelihood? If the average waiting time is eight minutes, what's the chance somebody gets served in the first three minutes? Should be less than half. And you plug that into a calculator and you'll get um, 31%, 0.3127. All right. On to the next one, letter B. What's the probability that a customer has to wait no more than 10 minutes? No, I'm sorry. Let me read it closely. What's the probability that a customer has to wait more than 10 minutes? I read it wrong. <laughs> so wait more than 10 minutes. That means your wait time is more than 10. So that means you're going to be from 10 on to infinity. We don't know what the stopping time is. We just know it's more than 10. So we integrate from 10 to infinity. Well, technically, it's an improper integral. We got to rip out the infinity, put in a b, and let b go off to infinity. Anti-antiderivatives the same guy. Negative x to the negative 
negative e to the negative x over 8. But we're going to write this time as though uh, as negative 1 over e to the x over 8. We're going to put the b in. We're going to put the 10 in. And let b go off to infinity and reason out what happens as b goes off to infinity. Ultimately, though, you can just, uh, you can, I don't really like it, but yeah, you can put it in the denominator and you see that the denominator is going off to infinity. Negative 1 over all, something that's getting exponentially large is getting very small. So it's going to go to 0. And the answer is 1 over e to the 5 fourths. That's the chance you have to wait more than 10 minutes. But once again, that's a calculus answer. We need a probability answer. We need to know, like, what's the number? I need a feel for this. Should it be more than 10? Should it, so more than 10 minutes, should it be more than 50%? If the average is 8 minutes, we should expect it to be less than 50% chance that you got to wait more than 10 minutes. And it is. It's 26.85% um, chance when you throw that into a calculator. 0.2685. All right. Finally, the third question says, what's the median waiting time? You see, the average waiting time is 8. What about the median waiting time? Remember, now median is your cutoff where the, half the people, I guess in this question, wait less than that, and half the people wait more than that. You have two options. You have a left-hand integral and a right-hand integral. I think I have it set up here as the right-hand integral, which probably isn't smart. Now, let's check it out. You know, the antiderivative, of course, is going to be negative e to the negative x over 8. That's not going to change. The 8's going to, you know, um, the 1 8 is going to help you cancel that um, negative 8 that comes out. Um, yeah, why would I do this as an improper? Well, let's just do it. So let b go off to infinity. Uh, and you must set this equal to a half and backtrack and find the limit of integration. Same antiderivative. Same guy, written as 1 over e to the x over 8, with a negative, sorry. And then we'll put a b in, and we'll put an m in, just like above. Above, we put a b in, and we put a 10 in. Now we're going to put a b in and an m in. And we're going to set it equal to a half. This time, we know what the area is supposed to be. This is the right hand, 50%, going from m off to infinity. The left hand, 50% would be going from actually 0 to m. That might have been better to do, but here we go. So um, this is what we're working with now. What about this off to infinity part? What's going on there? Well, b, b is getting large, and divide by 8 is still large, exponentially large, after raising it to the exponent on e. So that part's going to go to 0. The double minus there is that. 1 over e to the m over 8 it's supposed to be equal to a half. Cross multiply. 2 is equal to e to the m over 8. ln both sides. m over 8 is equal to the ln of 2 times by 8. Your median waiting time is 8 times the ln of 2. Okay. In general, I think the answer is going to be that mean times the ln of 2. I don't think that's an accident. All right. And, um... Uh, well, that, you know, it's a math answer. It's a calculus answer. We need a, a, a feel for what this number is. So we throw it into a computer and we find out that it's um, a little more than five and a half minutes. So the median waiting time is five and a half minutes, but the average waiting time is eight minutes. When they're so different like that, that represents a skewed distribution. All right, you know, that's enough for now. Let's go ahead and end this video. It was a good example. In the next video, we look at calculating standard deviation. Well, and of course, it's calculating variance and then calculating the standard deviation from the variance. That'll be in the next video. All right. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey and help you understand this, uh, this uh, so how the inner workings of the calculus problems um, go. And if you need any help, just let me know. Comment down below. Ask lots of questions. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.